Hi there, my name is Karen Andrews and I'm going to talk to you quickly today about my first ever Spartan race experience. So a little bit about me, if you are unfamiliar with my work, uh, I have already talked about this uh, subject on my blog a little bit, which I will link to below. Uh, but for some additional background, I am a an occasional runner. Uh, when I decide to really put my mind to something, I will enter a, a race, uh, mostly half marathons. That's my uh, favorite distance. But uh, I have done a marathon. Actually, uh, on the day of recording this, it is the third anniversary since I ran a full marathon, uh, which was the Melbourne Marathon here in Australia. And I always like these additional challenges. So when I learned about Spartan um, and other races like it, uh, including Tough Mudder, for example, I was very curious because uh, they have the combined elements of the endurance part of the racing with the actual uh, running, which I was familiar with, uh, but with the um, things like the obstacles uh, and uh, and I always do enjoy those sorts of physical challenges. So um, once I discovered that there was going to be a race down here in Victoria called um, the um, Spartan Trifecta up at Bright, I thought, well, why don't I just enter the whole trifecta? And uh, as I'll, you were about to discover, uh, that uh, did not quite go as well uh, as I thought. So the, uh, the the trifecta of these Spartan races is uh, if you complete one um, in over a weekend or over a year, you have options. But the particular one at Bright, you enter over the weekend. So you start with a 14 plus kilometre run, which is called the super. Uh, the sprint is the next one, which is uh, straight afterwards in some cases uh, in, the, in that afternoon, which is a seven plus kilometre run. And then the Sunday is the big one, the beast. And that is, uh, the website says, I think 21 plus Ks, but I've heard that it's about 24 Ks, but I, I can't verify that. And I thought, yes, I'll do all three because uh, maybe with the kinds of training experience I had that I could rest in between races and sort of get my energy up back up to go back out there uh now that is quite a, a newbish attitude because uh this is coming from someone who has only really run flat um distances even though i live in a very hilly part of um melbourne uh, i'm used to hills but i don't really relish the thought of running up them so i don't uh so there we have it and uh another thing that uh which um i'm going to so i'm going to talk about what uh, i would do differently um for next races so this may be helpful to other people who are considering entering a spartan race even though i will caveat everything by saying i am not a physical um tr sort of fitness expert neither am i a medical expert so if you go want to do some sort of uh program or uh, training regime uh, to do so and consult with someone who knows what they're doing and not someone like me who uh, really doesn't <laughs> as it turned out uh, so yes to talk about the training when I ran the marathon I was always surprised oh, there's some dramatic <laughs> uh, lightning <laughs> lighting there uh, I was very surprised to find out how much um, it just took out of my everyday life just having to build those um, distances incrementally while conditioning your body with um, you know, strength training as well which is vitally important uh, and with um, Spartan racing or any obstacle racing I think the um, conditioning part is absolutely essential even more so like I just feel like and that's why a lot of I noticed a lot of CrossFit people who were competing up there on the weekend uh, because um, not that I'm very familiar with the CrossFit well but from what I have gathered that, that um, the focus is very much on uh, functional movements and really um, doing those uh, executing those with um, precision and uh, while also improving on your overall endurance and stamina. And uh, I think that's why 
that suits them really well. Um, as for me, um, I did not, I, I was working practically full time uh, the first six months of this year, as most people do, I know, but I just didn't fit that into my um, programming schedule. Uh, I, work, I write, uh, I'm a publisher, I'm an author, so I had um, some additional projects on the side that uh, preoccupied me. So I actually didn't really have much time to dedicate to training until August. So August, September, October, September, so two months. That's not long enough. No, no, no. Um, not in the slightest. So my family would like to go back next year to compete because um, so um, that will be November next year. So I will be making sure I do at least six months of proper training rather than two. I'm going to intersperse this video with a few uh, things that um, some footage I took on the day and some photos. So I hope that you find those of interest. Um, so I'm going to talk about the great things about the uh, Spartan race. Um, first thing is that I actually managed to complete one of them not the trifecta um no that was a bit of a disappointment but i did manage to finish the super which is the 14k plus one and there is my medal the very lovely um royal blue uh, um color and like other finishes of the races you also get this um finishes t-shirt um Note for the people who for sizings things are um, that's important. Um, I'm very short, um, even though, um, and this is a small and it's a very large small, so their um, sizings are generous. So maybe if bear that in mind if you ever finish and you're not sure which uh, size to collect. So the plus about going up to bright if you're not familiar with the area uh, i wasn't i hadn't been up there before but everybody who goes up there tells me how beautiful it is up there in the mountains and when we were driving up there um and you could see the the snow on the um on the mountains ahead of you it was beautiful it was the last uh, official weekend of the ski season so there yeah there was still some snow around and if you're driving into that and you see all the the creeks um nearby and it was just and the weather was really lovely on the saturday anyway the sunday um it was a little bit unpleasant and it did start to rain but the saturday was lovely and another thing i really liked uh, we went up there on the friday night and the um spartan race organizers um had the registration uh area open next to the brewery in town um which is a place like a, a a hotel um like a bar restaurant and where you can pick up your packs early because and i really appreciated that because on day, race day for most places um things can get a really bit rushed and if you're running a little bit late uh it can put things into a uh, sort of precarious um timing so um that was and and it was a really good um atmosphere there as well so it really heightened I think the anticipation of everybody there who was just like looking forward to um, kicking things off the next morning uh, except for me because um, the, the week leading up to Spartan I was watching practically every single Spartan video there was on the internet as to how you could best um, complete certain obstacles and, and these were the obstacles that uh, I knew that I was probably going to have to do, and I was watching, paying a, a close attention to the Spartan Australia, Spartan Race Australia Facebook page as well, because they were doing little um, tips um, on through Facebook for uh, things as well. So, <laughs> um, all that aside, though, it, I, everything is very different once you get to race day. And then when I arrived at the um, at the area and there were my wave was just about to be called uh, I noticed that there was a, a big fence uh, in front of the the holding area and that was probably I think technically maybe the first obstacle is that you had to jump over that to get in there and when I put my hands on the top of the fence and sort of to push pull myself up and over and I had, I had a lot of trouble with it I didn't get my timing right and as I was putting my leg over and I was struggling and someone had to help get over I was thinking oh my god what have I got myself into if I can't even get into the starting area um but I didn't really have much time to think because before I knew it the horn went off and we were off um 
And yes, so there, the race itself now is a bit of a blur. And I, although I regret not having much uh, in-person footage that I could be showing you as this is going along, because I didn't actually take anything with me. I didn't take a GoPro or my phone. Uh, that's okay because um, that means that I am forced to commit to memory some other things as well. Uh, one of those being that um, the mountain that you see all the time and people always talk about um, up in Bright in particular is having, uh, for those people doing the longer distances, they have to get up that mountain uh, once, uh, sometimes twice for the, for the beast uh, and the ultras have to do it even more. <laughs> uh, and there no matter how much it's hard you think it's going to be it's worse than that it was like i the mountain um on that day in partic particular because by the time i got to the ascent it was really hot that all the clouds are gone and it, that there's no um not much protection on you you do weave in out up in and out of the trees going up there but it's very exposed in a lot of areas uh, and by the time I eventually got to the top like barely like practically almost crawling uh, I burst into tears and I was just like um, I was really bonking out I, I hadn't had until that point any sort of sugars or salts and I probably really should have and the crew member up there had this wonderful um, assorted tray of sweets uh, and fruit and um, and she sort of comforted me and then led me over to the sweets and to pick what I wanted. After we, after I had to scale one of the really tall um, walls as an obstacle because it's not – because they're quite sadistic. <laughs> and that's the point. You have to scale this mountain and then you get you can't really relax into, when you get to the top because right away you have to jump over another enormous um, – wall before you come back down again so she helped me uh get up and over the wall so I was just, there was just no way I was going to do it and there are some areas on the course where if you fail an obstacle and you need to do the the burpee uh penalty uh it's very very hard because it's gravelly and uh and so I didn't want to have to do those um, burpees at that particular obstacle because up there it's pure gravel so so the mountain is one thing and then the water was the other. So before um, the day came along, the, the water was the thing I was looking forward to the least. Um, I really dislike getting wet if I don't choose to get wet. It's a sensory thing of mine, a little quirk. But I've got to say that um, by the time you hit the water challenges, that, thank goodness, I think they've changed it. I heard people talking on the track that once upon a time you, the water challenges were quite um, close to the beginning, but now they've moved to, to more laterally in the race. So by then you're really hot. And even though you're wading into, I think it's um, snow melt or something pretty close to it, it, for me it was just such a relief on the legs it just cooled them down and just oh it was just wonderful and then um there were a two or more i think i think there's three in total really good, um water crossings in in the super i can't remember i think that's right so every time i got in the water i was actually looking forward to it uh and it didn't really affect my feet i thought they would um getting wet would be very abrasive uh but i didn't get any uh blisters or anything from that which was good uh what else so if i had um any other tips i could offer you um one any doing the longer distances in particular um the 14 up um hydration is very 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 important because this isn't the kind of race that you would enter um in a met um, metropolitan area like a lot of those fun runs are very cushy they look after you very well and along the way there are uh, plenty of uh toilet sort of facilities or uh, water stops water drinking stations even you might have um sponsors that um offer hydrolyte or you know any other those sorts of loop sports drinks um here, no, you don't. There are a few water stations along the course, but uh, not as many as I would have liked. So on the day, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll throw on my hydration pack and go, and I'm just so thankful that I did. Even my daughter took the um, them on the 7K sprint to just 
continually supply yourself. Um, I don't have very uh, good kidney, kidneys and so I actually have to drink lots of water daily anyway. So uh, that demand is increased even more the more um, active I am and the more I sweat and, and lose um, salts and so forth. So um, I'll just show you my the hydration pack. It's it's just a simple sort of one that you would buy at um, Revel. It's um, this one here. Um, now, in other Spartan videos, I did notice people saying that um, they opt for the kind of hydration pack where um, once you have it on, I'll pour it on here. Once you have it on, um, they buy the ones that have little pouches down the straps so that makes i'll stand up a little bit so while they're running uh, they can easily access uh gels if they need be or any nuts or dried fruit just out of there um because i've got to say that because this doesn't have that every time i needed to get something out of my backpack i would have to stop and then pull it off and then um open this little pouch here which is the only uh, storage that I have on this and then get out my supplies that way um, otherwise sometimes people buy additional little um, velcro-y pouches that can sort of wrap around the bottom of here that they can then so that means they can still keep it on during the race as well so that's something to bear in mind although I don't think I'll be using this enough to upgrade anytime soon but maybe that will happen in the future um and there's the little the little bladder from these as well i this is a new one that we bought because i didn't look after our old one very well if anyone knows what a bladder looks like once mold starts growing in them it's not very pleasant so this one's going to be well aired and dried and taken care of uh speaking of food is that what i already did um i think that when I was running the marathon, gels were sufficient for me. Um, and a Spartan race gel, the gel I had was revolting. And I actually was craving real food. And I know that when people were running out on the course, um, they had um, people in that lolly fruit situation I was talking about up on the mountain. I noticed most people were actually uh, heading for the grapes and the oranges and eating those as snacks rather than the lollies. I know it's a, a personal preference sort of thing, but I do feel that um, even though I had a lolly then, uh, I should have taken some proper food, although I did have a protein bar afterwards and that was very good. Uh, and also at the end of the Spartan race, along with the t-shirt and the medal, um, you do get a free beer or cider at the ending, at the end. And I don't really drink either. So I thought, oh, I'll walk past that. Um, I don't think that's for me. Uh, but then once I did finish and it was I was so hot and I needed anything just to sort of replenish my fluids and some sugars I actually took a cider and it was the most wonderful tasting thing <laughs> I think I've had in a long time and um, so my body uh, gratefully received it um so what else can I say about uh the Spartan race uh there are a lot of obstacles that I didn't even attempt, which is disappointing. I know people say, oh, you should at least give everything a crack. But because my upper body strength isn't the best, there were walls where you actually had to hold on without any feet support and then pull yourself along. Um, there were just the fortress is one as well which has a, a, a rock climbing and a net component as well and I just thought no I can't do that uh so <laughs> rather than just try and maybe I didn't want to injure myself that was the one thing as well I just had to weigh up the risks and I was just do uh, burpees I'm one of those sorts I'm one of those few people that don't mind doing burpees uh although when you're doing 30 at a time sometimes in quite consecutive quick consecutive order uh, they do get a little old <laughs> pretty bad I have to say as well though by the time you get to the end of the um, obstacle um, end of the course at the end there are quite a few obstacles clustered um, at, they were out got time at least anyway so the javelin throw for example was the second last one before the jumping over the fire pit um, 
yeah, I was just once people got to that point, so I think the the crew and the staff, Spartan staff members, were quite uh, uh, forgiving. If you didn't do maybe the thirty, you, you did as many as you could. Or I, I was actually doing some really deep squats by then as well because some people uh, couldn't can't do burpees, and so uh, those squats were ex deemed acceptable, and uh, that that was much better. One, a few obstacles that I did complete that I was really proud to say that I did was um, the the, uh, the balancing, the balance beam challenge. Uh, that was because I actually set up some wood in my garage. Uh, that was one of the things in the, my training that I did include. And lo, uh, I passed it. So that's something to be said for proper uh, training. Uh, also the Atlas carry as well. Uh, which was a really heavy ball and I didn't even think I would get it up, uh, but I did uh, and managed to, to finish. Uh, so that, that was really cool. So that was one thing I could say, yeah, I was, um, that was that. And so I think in summary, um, I think that in the future, the kind of training that I did do uh, was fine up until a point. I did do a lot of uh, special forces or Spartan-y kinds of uh, training sessions at my gym, um, which are kind of like boot camps, um, depending on where you are. Um, I would continue to do those, but I would um, definitely do uh, prioritise um, gym workouts, which I would work on um, my upper body strength as well, um, push-ups and um, dips and things um, probably weren't enough, at least for me. Um, one thing I'll say uh, is that it was really quite lonely at times, well not lonely, but I, I, there were many points during the race where I was wishing that I was running with someone else. I would say a great many people completing the course are doing it in duos or trios or perhaps even larger groups. And I can see now why, because they all help each other get through um, obstacles quicker. You, you can help because you can help assist each other as well. I didn't, I didn't know this ahead of time. So um, especially with the taller walls, you would, one person will prop themselves up against the wall and lifting up another person if they got, if they then stood on their shoulders to get over the top, um, doing the uh, cargo nets because they're so heavy, um, people would lift them up and then uh, stage themselves along the net and then just manoeuvre themselves along so everybody can get through quicker. Uh, that was really good because sometimes I did, uh, sometimes there were bottlenecks at obstacles so there were a lot of people around you could turn to to ask for help but that sometimes there weren't um, and so there were obstacles that I might have attempted to do if someone was there to help me but because no one else was around I um, failed. <laughs> uh, another thing as well is that um, most of the people out in the course were wonderful. I would say 95% of people were um helpful and sort of supportive and really it was just a really nice atmosphere although the the five percent and I don't I feel like I need to be honest to say this there were some people who were there very obviously to either beat a pb or try and finish first or you know there was a very competitive edge there are very lots of competitive people there and so they could be quite um <sighs> I want to say rude, and I think I will say rude out on the trails. Um, if some people have a good etiquette in that, they will call ahead of time if they're coming up behind you on the right hand side and just say coming through. Um, so they just give you a heads up. Other people just kind of barrel past you, and then like if they brush against you, um, and you can get knocked sideways. And so it was just like, especially towards the end, and I was near the river. Um, on the back uh, two or three kilometres, there were some guys that came through that if I hadn't gotten out of the way, they just would have pushed past. And I just feel like, I mean, that's life. I suppose that you, you can't con you just control or moderate everybody's behaviour. But um, that was just something that was a little bit, oh, okay, this is a surprise more than anything else. So just maybe it's something to bear in mind for people if um yeah, you, you, there is uh, dynamics on the trail that um, that uh, come into play. So I, I think that's all. Uh, I hope that you found this somewhat uh, 
entertaining or uh, maybe informative a little uh, a little bit. So I, I love the day. I mean, uh, I I got back to camp or well, camp the, the the area knowing that there was just no way that I was going to be able to uh, do the sprint because I took so long doing the super that uh, by the time I arrived back I had uh, an hour uh, or 90 minutes, not much to then sort of back that up and go out again and do the sprint which was although half the distance it was still <laughs> more than I could do and then get up the next morning and do 20 long kilometers so I just like I five years ago I would have just probably dug in my heels and said nope I've committed to do the thing I will do it but this time I think I know my body a little bit better just to say no look just let it go. Maybe this time, this year wasn't your year. Maybe, maybe um, another time you can. So, yeah. So, see you later. And thanks.